Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia has begun receiving travelers from the travel bubble under the Bubblecation campaign. The Ministry of Health and Wellness cracks down on COVID-19 protocol infringements. And the Department of Environmental Health is working feverishly to restore livelihoods. With the reopening of the borders, travelers from the travel bubble have begun visiting St. Lucia. Caribcation recently introduced its latest marketing campaign, Bubblecation, where travelers from countries within the designated travel bubble are able to visit St. Lucia. These visitors are required to submit a negative PCR COVID-19 test prior to arrival into St. Lucia within seven days of travel. All arriving passengers from within the bubble must have traveled directly from a country within the bubble and have been in that country for at least 21 days. Anisia Antoine has the details. The Caribbean's leading destination marketing brand, Caribcation, has introduced its latest marketing campaign, Bubblecation, where travelers from countries within the designated travel bubble can reconnect with family and friends or enjoy a romantic getaway in St. Lucia. SLTA's public relations manager, Jereen Georges, explained that the bubble countries approved by the Department of Health and Wellness currently include Antigua, Barbuda, Aruba, Anguilla, Bahamas, Barbados, Bermuda, Bonaire, British Virgin Islands, Curaçao, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, Montserrat, St. Barthelme, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Martin, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, and Turks and Caicos. Now, visitors within the bubble countries who have been within one of the bubble jurisdictions for at least 21 days are eligible to be a part of Bubblecation. So they are able to come to St. Lucia and would be exempt from quarantine. However, they are required to obtain a negative PCR COVID-19 test prior to arrival in St. Lucia, and that test must be obtained no more than seven days prior to arrival in St. Lucia. Additionally, visitors from the bubble countries are subject to all island, all on-island protocols, and that includes airport screening, wearing of masks in public, and observing physical distancing. Marketing Manager for Caribbean and Events, Christopher Gustave, indicated that SLTA looks forward to welcoming back Caribbean brothers and sisters through Bubblecation, which for the authority would be a wonderful avenue to again share common cultures and friendship. The important Caribbean market welcomes well over 85,000 visitors annually, and with the commencement of commercial flights within the region, a positive growth trajectory is anticipated. The public relations manager indicated that individuals within the bubble desirous of traveling to St. Lucia are to prefill the mandatory arrival registration form located on www.stlucia.org slash COVID-19. Additionally, visitors can utilize www.caribcation.org to assist in direct bookings of their accommodation at a wider variety of authentic community properties, which include villas, Airbnb properties, and small hotels. Airlines around the region, including Caribbean Airlines, Inter-Caribbean, Air Antilles, and One Caribbean have committed to serving the region with the resumption of service. Travelers should, however, check with the airlines for their flight schedules. The health and safety of local communities remain paramount with the continued responsible phased approach to the reopening of the tourism sector. With that said, the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, through its Caribcation brand, will work with approved operators, including accommodation properties, car rentals, restaurants, tour operators, shopping centers, taxi associations, yachting and water-based adventure tour operators in providing a safe visitor experience. Trusted approved operators should sign up at www.caribcation.org or call 1758-458-7101 for more information. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. On Tuesday, July 28, 2020, the Ministry of Health and Wellness received information from a local bank 
of a returning national from the United Kingdom who arrived on Sunday, July 26, 2020, accessing services within the bank. Her ministry contacted the Royal St. Lucia Police Force with the necessary information. On investigation, many breaches were noted, including leaving home quarantine in less than 14 days, receiving guests into the home during the quarantine period, and providing inaccurate information to health authorities in relation to the number of persons residing at the dwelling house where quarantine was taking place. The individual in question and the remaining members of the household were all transferred to a government-operated quarantine facility where they were screened and tested. The family will complete the 14-day quarantine at that institution. Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, commended the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the private institution associated with this case, and the community for their vigilance and swift response to this matter. As we continue with the phased reopening of the country, the risk for introduction of COVID-19 is increased. The public is advised that all of the protocols are still in place, including the reduced numbers for public transportation and the protocols for the private sector establishments. These also include the use of face masks in public places and to maintain safe physical distances from, from others. The Ministry of Health we once again reiterate the importance of quarantine for returning nationals and visitors as it is a good measure to minimize the risk of the transmission of COVID-19. And it is with this we ask that everyone adheres to the 14-day quarantine time and also for persons to stay in quarantine for the full period. This action is expected to protect the health and the safety of every individual within our country. We also appeal to everyone to continue to support our national effort to minimize the threat of COVID-19 on our island. St. Lucia has recorded a total of 25 COVID-19 cases to date. 22 of these cases have fully recovered and three patients remain in care at the respiratory hospital and remain stable. A total of 3,548 tests have been conducted to date. Two of the patients have recovered clinically and do not show any signs and symptoms of COVID-19. However, they still record positive COVID-19 test results. The last confirmed case is an 86-year-old gentleman who is recovering well in care. All of the family members, friends and healthcare workers disclosed to the contact tracing team have been screened and tested and to date the results have been negative. The health team continues to monitor and investigate the source of infection. Efforts are continuing to ensure that the health and safety of all local communities are enforced through the protocols outlined for the management of COVID-19. And as St. Lucia's economy is reopening in a phased approach, the Department of Environmental Health has been working feverishly establishing protocols for each sector with the health and safety of individuals as the number one priority, all while restoring livelihoods. More in this report. The emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in not only a health crisis, but an economic crisis as well. Hundreds of jobs have been lost as part of the economic fallout of the pandemic. The Ministry of Health and Wellness have been combating the virus on several fronts, including ensuring the health and safety of all St. Lucians and restoring the livelihoods of the public. The Department of Environmental Health in the Ministry of Health and Wellness has been working with stakeholders in the various sectors in an effort to establish protocols for reopening. Senior Environmental Officer in the Department of Environmental Health, Emerson Vitalis, indicated that as of late, the majority of applications have been coming from the sporting organizations and caterers. And what I want the public to understand is that within the development of those protocols, the essential goal is about protecting public health and public safety and you know they do come to us those applications we review them we assess and the aim is not to shut down or, or to prevent any activity from happening but the aim is to do it in a controlled environment an environment which promotes public health and safety and that's what the protocols aim to do at the end of the day so we have been working with quite a bit of you know um, sporting institutions sporting organizations as far as Schuzel, um also some of the caterers who are coming in and they want to to again you know begin the, 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 um, the catering business to, again to gain revenue and you know to serve the public so we have been working with quite a bit of them in developing those um, protocols and assessing the establishments for compliance and I must say most of them are 
compliant because they recognize that without compliance they really can't operate and they can't provide that level of safety which we are in engendering from, from the public. A senior environmental health officer certain that the department's priority remains protecting lives and restoring livelihoods. By establishing protocols, the Department of Environmental Health is able to ensure a safe transition in the country's reopening. Again, the aim of, of, of environmental health in this, whole, in this whole fight against COVID is to ensure that the public remains safe. Um, we have written quite a bit of protocols from then, and what we're continuously doing is to monitor those protocols, monitor the establishments which are opened, and you know, again, to ensure the safety of the general public of St. Lucia. As the reopening of St. Lucia continues in a phased approach, officials assure that the health and safety of the people of St. Lucia remain a top priority. As of July 28, 2020, the National Insurance Corporation, NIC, processed a total of 36,733 applications, with a total sum of $30.1 million being disbursed under the Economic Relief Program, ERP. NIC's communications manager, McNaughton McLean, encouraged employers to update the portal and notify the NIC of any changes to allow for the processing of payments, as no payments will be made for the month of June until the NIC has received the updated information. We still have this issue of employers um, failing to provide the necessary information for us to process claims, and I can give you a little Mm -hmm. um, information on that as well. The number of employers registered on the employer portal. Now, the employer portal was created to allow employers to provide that information that would be required for us to process the claims and um, make the payouts to the qualifying applicants. So the number of employers registered in that portal um, was uh, 1,367. The number of registered employers registered but yet to upload any information. These are people who registered, were approved, but have failed to upload information on behalf of their employees, 119. The number of employers yet to submit information for me, 613. And the number of employers yet to submit information for June, 718. NIC's head of group internal audit, Suan Shal Repain, indicated that despite an excess of 18,000 applicants having successfully received payments, the NIC has made additional improvements in communication to better assist individuals who are currently experiencing challenges in accessing the benefits of the ERP. Shal Repain also explained that an individual's receipt of funds from the ERP is subject to whether or not they are currently receiving any other benefit. The regulations stipulate that employee applicants would be paid the higher of the two. So they would be paid the higher of the economic relief or if uh, they have applied for another benefit, maternity benefit and so on, they would receive the higher of the two. Sometimes because of the timing when one is processed as opposed to the other, the difference have to be paid to make up for the higher of the two. So if I have to give an example, Somebody who applies for the economic relief and they would have gotten, uh, they would have been entitled to a payment of say $1,000 and they also applied for say a maternity benefit and that maternity benefit amounted to say $800. If the maternity benefit is paid already, they would have gotten $800. However, the two benefits together, the $1,000 obviously account for the high of the two. When they get the economic relief payment, they will be getting $200. The head of group internal audit explained the rationale behind the time frame in which payments are made. Though the program is from April to September, it needs to be appreciated that until the time has passed, we don't pay in advance. So we would not be paying from April to September in one batch. The time has, has to elapse. We need to get... Um, in the case of the self-employed, we don't have, say, employer uploaded because they, the, the applicant is also the employer. By, by virtue of the nature of self-employed. Self However, those self-employed persons may return to trade. We don't know. We need to allow the time to pass, and we are depending on those self-employed persons to inform us when they have returned to employment. Also, they may start contributing to the, the national insurance, and that may give us an indication of whether or not they have returned to trade. So we don't pay in advance, and that is one of the reasons why the applicant would not see 
you know, all of the payments to September. That was NIC's head of group internal audit, Suan Shal Ripin. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of the All. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Quayol. Monsieur Tan Janelle. Monsieur Madame Department, qui n'est pas habilité, pour formation en gouvernement cette fois-ci, c'est GIS, et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle à Quayol. Présentez-vous, Primus Hutchinson. Du moins, il y a une conférence de CARICOM pour adresser les crimes et les violences. Il y a une association qui concerne les violences contre les femmes et les hommes. Le ministre de l'Université de responsabilité pour faire des violences en défense au salaire, c'est le honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, qui a adressé cette session, a parlé de la situation de violence en défense au salaire, comme la maladie corona qui a menacé le pays. Dr. Rigobert a déclaré que la situation de violence au salaire mérite un haut degré d'assistance par le gouvernement. Selon Dr. Rigobert, à ce rapport qui sortit Hot Bio Statistics, a montré que 10% de la population, c'est le 18 ans en moutant, j'ai expérimenté maltraitement sexuel pour 12 mois qui passaient. En parmi eux qui trouvaient affectés, 80 ans, c'était femme, et quand 17 c'était un homme. Pour pouvoir montrer aussi, plus que 63 à ces individus, la situation de la part est assez grave. Pardon, 42 quoi qui ça a fait tout le monde. Dr. Rigobert a dit que ça c'est une situation qui est très critique et que j'ai agendé en l'eau pérez. Le ministre a dit que la situation est la plus grave qui se rapporte à la sortie. Selon Dr. Rigobert, il y a des dégâts de la situation sexuelle qui est apportée à la société. Il n'y a pas de fait pour adresser. Mais la maladie de Corona est exposée comme il est déjà arrivé à des dégâts pour exploser dans la région de la Corée et avec le reste de la terre. Je vais vous faire un effort pour faire la région internationale. Pour adresser, le ministre Rigobert a embrassé une de recommandations qui a fait pour l'année assistance finance en place pour ces pays qui sont plus sensibles et vulnérables. Selon le Dr. Rigobert, les a arrivé pour ces pays qui ont fait une grande bataille contre les violences pour établir la législation qui est très forte, réviser la constitution et tout degré de sécurité pour effacer les violences contre les femmes. Et Le président du Conseil de la Jeunesse, le Nihilus Alfred, a déclaré que malgré la maladie de Corona a affecté le grand plan pour observer le mois de jeunesse en mois d'avril, quand même, il a continué pour faire la jeunesse pays à espoir. Le Conseil de la Jeunesse a trouvé 25 000 dollars pour le premier ministre, le président Alain Chasne, en résultat de la grand bal charitable et de la pédasse qui a lié avec Mme Ni qui a organisé tous les années. Durant une discussion à ce moment Alfred parlait des plans d'organisation pour les jeunesses à cette ci Il y en a eu ces activités qui planaient pour tenir un spectacle pour assister les étudiants qui ont vu l'école en mois de septembre. Mais nous still avons ici une responsabilité nous pour basically assister les jeunes um, en tant que ça. So, la dernière chose de jeunesse, le septembre venu, um, l'année ça, qui n'a pas ça à faire Um, bagay pour aller l'école. Yon bagay sa afo di bag, live, um, je sais pas la bot bouclis la, do tale, yon bagay sa afo de sa pis, uniforme, se bagay sa la pis. Maman yon papa yon pa ni travail. Covid pou travail en chay moun. So, nou kaye try fe un uh, telephone. We, nou kaye nan um, basically try jouen assistance bay se moun sa la, ki pa kaye sa, um, ki pa kaye sa afo de bagay l'école sa la. So, um, 
l'autre point, nous avons fait des fonds là et puis nous avons fait des sépliciens qui ont trappé un chèque pour um, pour bail pour ces jeunes mouns là qui parlent ça um, à l'école, mais nous en septembre. Il y a un appel qui a sorti encore, 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 pour les membres publics en cette ci pour ne pas acheter des ordres tout partout, vaille et vaille en pays. Il y a une discussion à ce NTN, officier de communication et information, en autorité de ménagement à faire des ordres à cette ci Mme M. Lenja, plaider et puis le peuple pays pour faire ce qui est plus mère, pour faire un plus mère effort pour perdre la bêtise de la cage des ordres. Va être va être n'importe côté à cette ci Mme Jean dit que l'organisation qui a collaboré avec le ministère de la Santé, principalement, et le département de l'Environnement de la Santé publique, pour continuer à essayer de détruire la bêtise de ça là, qui a sali la réputation du pays cette ci et aussi la belle et la propreté de l'Environnement de la Santé. Les gens qui ont été en train de se faire, les gens qui ont été en un canal, les gens qui ont été en train de se faire, pour tuer cette lission, ça y est, on chaye toi. Quand il est, les autres aller côté, il n'y a pas si posé aller. C'est petit bon blanc, c'est plastique container, um, qui s'est mangé, tout ça quand on a joué, um, vermine. So, si nous n'y pouvons pas, Faire si we nous pas ni se ça sa oli wonu, nous pas ni vermin oli wonu, i important pour moun faire ça qui si pose fait pour chen pays a net. Madame Jean ka aussi fait public la sav ki autorité a, ja commencé a masse zodi a ko, a plein, ça veut dire go matou yo, ki ka occupé a pile ou sav nou teni on, on service kote nou te ka ma sezodi yon fwa pa mwa an chak pomen an peyi a. Nou kay kouman se sa an, mou, an mwa a oua. So, chanje ou teni on jou trok la te ka pase an komen nou, trok la kay pase an komen nou menm jou sa a. So, nous avons commencé en mois ou en ça c'est from demain. Le um, chocolat est en ces communes-là qui a toujours, toujours joué un service à l'IPI pour mieux samedi en mois. Et nous avons quoi si tout le monde fait tout ça qui est nécessaire, nous avons plus ou moins de vermine en pays. Et, monsieur, madame, ça c'est côté, nous avons trois bouts de nouvelles aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation encore. Pour que je ne puisse pas dire que vous avez la vie, vous avez pris cette autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez pris cette autre nouvelle? Je vous remercie pour cette autre nouvelle. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville. Thank you.